have been chosen to govern a land of great peril and promise. It has suffered long from the scourge of banditry, but there is another threat, an illegitimate baron who claims the northern territories as his own. It's me. I'm the illegitimate son. It's 2024, which means Manor Lords is on its way. A game that so many people have waited so long for. This medieval RTS combined with a city builder like something none have seen before. But Manor Lords has recently come out with its most recent trailer, this being its final release date, the 26th of April, 2024. Will you prove yourself worthy of this honor? Or will you perish by the traitor's steel? You know, since the demo that we got last year, the game actually hasn't changed too much, at least on the surface. Some of the UI that we saw in the trailer is a little bit different, and they seem to have made some improvements, especially when it comes to screen real estate and the streamlining of how you play. Putting down plots of buildings lets you indicate whether you want livestock, crops, so on and so forth, and you're able to distinguish that not only manually, but automatically with the size of the plots that you put down. These are little touches that really split this game apart from many others. But I for one, I for one really want to play some battles. And the battles that we see in this trailer show something a little bit more interesting, because we've seen plenty of stuff, people fighting, getting stabbed, and medieval knights going to war. But what I really wanted to know was whether this was actual gameplay. And this kind of confirms it in more of an interesting way. You see, it is a little bit janky and don't get me wrong, I think that's fine because it does show that what we're seeing in this trailer is from Man Lords itself. It's not pre-rendered bullshit that has just been displayed to try and promote the game, but you can see the mocap work that's been put in, and we've seen plenty of stuff during the development that mocap is how they've been doing it. Animations of soldiers fighting, even now you can see it implemented and they look a little bit janky, which I don't particularly mind, but everything seems to be flowing fairly well. Moving troops, and one of my favorite things is the UI of moving these strategy battles around. Displaying where each individual soldier will be, being able to set up flanking points, and of course, lines and lines of medieval knights. It looks incredibly satisfying and something that I think will be a huge success. Despite this though, Slavic Magic, the lead developer, has always mentioned that this is not going to be a replacement for Total War. But it seems like this RTS portion is the thing that gets most of the hype, yet it is the city building where most of the meat and potatoes are. From building up your small villages into cities, to setting policies as we've seen in the new trailer, to claiming land that you can then go to war with or trade between. You can be raided by bandits or other AI that own bits of land, and of course, set up rally points for your troops or your peasants to, in order to go and defend their lands. These are all small aspects and kind of bigger events, but a lot of your game is going to be spent micromanaging the economy. Whether it's finding the correct regions for your resources, whether it's mining, wood, hunting, crops, so on and so forth, and finding people that have the stuff that you haven't acquired, trading with them, becoming allies and hopefully not rough enemies. But it was actually what Manor Lords put on their Twitter that I thought was the most interesting part. Because <laughs> there's a story that Slavic Magic told of when they started making this game, I think it was their girlfriend that said, let's put a target for about 7,000 wish lists. Yet when that first trailer came out, it caught my eye. It caught the eye of a lot of other YouTubers and people started making videos on it. Not only this, but the initial trailer itself gained so much traction. A new medieval city builder, especially in a time where the Total War games just don't seem to be going back to that time period, it was definitely a gap in the market. And because of this, it became one of the most wishlisted games on Steam. And as of January this year, it passed 2 million wishlists. But I think we need to put that into perspective. If we go into the top wish lists on Steam at the top, well, it isn't anymore, but it used to be the day before. You know that survival game that turned out to be a huge scam? They shut down a week after their launch. Yeah, people were excited for that, but we can push that to the side because that's no longer the most wish listed game, not just because it's released, but because it was an absolute flop. Hades 2 is at the top. This game still hasn't been announced, but it is a huge name and a series, the first, that won countless awards when it first came out. Then at the number two slot, we have Manor Lords, a smaller, what started indie game that has now reached heights that are unseen for a title that started with just one person. Not only this, but it was picked up by Nvidia in terms of endorsements that was earmarked for the RTX treatment. Not only this, but now Xbox have picked up for Game Pass and it will be coming to the Xbox consoles. 
which is something that I didn't expect at first because strategy games rarely work that well on console, but this one seems like it's big enough to at least get the backing for it. You know, actually, having a coffee that's very fast going cold while I'm trying to record a video isn't ideal. But Manor Lords in terms of wishlist is above games like Blight Survival, which is another huge medieval game. Frostpunk 2, a sequel to one of the most successful RTS survival games of all time. Ark 2, okay, an admittedly controversial title, but the Ark franchise, everybody knows that. And one of my most hyped games, Space Marine 2. You see, this game has surpassed everything that anybody expected, and I think especially the developers. But what is it? What makes Manor Lords that much more special? Well, personally, I think it's this. I think it's the fact that you can zoom straight in and look at these individual people doing their own thing, whether it is chopping wood, going hunting, even going to war as we've seen in some of the trailers. And then you can zoom right the way back out to see the whole of your village, to see the whole of your region, placing roads, towns, waiting for people to come and settle. I mean, things like these workshops, these granaries, and having these freeform roads that are so well blended that create this gorgeous, immersive world. The amount of attention to detail that's been put in is something unheard of. And I adore this. The way that you're able to place down these houses, and depending on the size of the plot that you put down depends on the utilities that they can have. It's small little things that just increase that relatability to the real world, letting the NPCs and the AI dictate the way they want to live, and you just directing them in the right direction, and then having to intervene when, well, stuff inevitably goes wrong. This road building system as well, the way they look and are integrated within the world, being able to place them down, which was initially more freeform, but now has been implemented into a more strategic way of not necessarily a grid system, but a snap on effect. You see, I actually spoke to Slavic Magic and they've been fantastic going through the changes of how the game started and where it is now. Small things like specifically the road system that started off being dynamic, where NPCs could walk to certain areas, whether they were walking into the forest to do their job, and slowly but surely the road would then erode around them. Yet that was taken out due to just performance issues and it didn't quite fit in with the direction that Manolos was going in at the time. But this was so well communicated. And you can see this on their Twitter, all the updates that have been coming out and on their Discord. There have been public tests within the last few years to try and get feedback on the game to be improved. And Slavic Magic is constantly letting people know what's going on. And that, that is why it's a concoction of an incredible idea, beautiful timing with a gap in the market, a game that looks unlike something else and combines two playstyles that people crave, city building and RTS battles. Then, the beautiful story of an underdog solo developer that has slowly worked their way up, that's had the backing of a community and almost communicated in such a way that has made this game feel like a community project. That is why Manolos is going to be so successful. And I know I sound like a shill, but I am so excited for this game. And you know what? I will shill this game to my death, because I have never been so confident that it's going to do so well. Please don't cut that up. Shit.